All right. Let's try this, shall we? Uh, got a crowded house, house like the, the Finn brothers. So I'm seeking a momentary place of refuge wherever I can find it. Um, but where better to find refuge than in the Word of God? Amen. Amen. Psalm 34, 8, in case you're just joining in this week. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may seek good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Now, as much as I was trying this week to like hustle into the, uh, the temporal interpretations of some of the promises here, my my soul, I swear, keeps tugging me. Oh, I'm getting soaked out here. I don't know why it's wet, but it is. Um, my soul keeps tugging me back to this understanding of, uh, of David's excitement here and praise here, pointing towards a God who proclaims himself in goodness and in mercy. And in provision for his people, certainly temporally. I mean, the Old Testament is filled with stories of, uh, you know, uh, uh, walls felled and enemies defeated and, uh, you know, miraculous uh, escapes planned and executed with uh, divine and dexterous glee. And indeed, the New Testament is full of uh, miracles in the name of of Christ, of, of God made flesh. But there's something I feel like in the very essential celebration of God's goodness that these promises speak to the my kingdom is not of this worldness of God, which is not that uh, I'm saying God has any less uh, dominion over this world but he has given this world over to many things that specifically do not please him which seems strange and contradictory all by itself but I truly believe those are executed by a, a grand storyteller you know who is waiting who awaits that final movement he's gathering characters day by day to participate in his uh, in his battle, in his resolution, in his climax that we might all see blessing uh, in his resolution and that a lot of these blessings he then points you directly to are ones of striving are not ones of result necessarily that the result comes far beyond when we think it will and again, our lives are but a whisper, so it really doesn't take that long, relatively speaking. But for us, it can seem like an, uh, an eternity. And I think that's why people come up with adages like, you know, God's timing is not our own. And why would it be, you know? I mean, if your watch was eternal, like, would you, you wouldn't even see, throughout your entire life, you wouldn't even see a hand move. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he says, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is a gift in and of itself. The illumination of, of a benevolent but just God who sees wickedness for what it is, for when our souls cry out for, for, for judgment or for recompense for all the nasty in the world. He is there to, to explain, to tell us uh, its result when our hearts cry out just for goodness and for mercy and for aid. 
he tells us how to get it. And then like a, like I guess the best sort of parent lets us, lets us flail about and try to do it ourselves all we want. But then when we want, when we want life, when we want many days and to see good, keep our tongue from evil and our lips from speaking deceit. Try that for one day, man. It's unbelievably hard. I'm not even saying to like deliberately deceive people, but how many of us live in self-deceit of long and powerful fashion? This guy. I was trying to do it with this, but it's hard to do to yourself. Look, I'm pointing the opposite direction. Um, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. These are the activities of the saint. Fear the Lord, you his saints, by the way. All who he calls children are saints. I know that word's been applied elsewise, but embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace the whatever the burden it may have for you, because it's a light one. It speaks to goodness and gentleness. Do good. Depart from evil, which is what we desire, and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Chase it every day. Make him a quotidian obsession. And that in and of itself, the very journey, the very striving, is in and of itself his blessing. It is the lack of no good thing. Because indeed it is, a, it is to even see those things as good, to even see goodness, and then to pursue it, becomes our, our delight. It becomes our joy. It becomes our peace. Peace by peace, anyhow. <laughs> Amen. And say that.